Welcome back from that short break. We are still with Mr. Max Omeda. We continue with his story. Mm. Look, which year exactly did you form that report? That was 1986. And uh, how many people did you start with? We started with a very small number scattered in, in our area of Serere. We were not more than 15. Okay. And then you go to other areas. And then, of course, we did not have a, a kind of a register to know from Bukedi, how many did we have? From Katakui, how many did we have? Or from other the, the counties, how many did we have? But we found ourselves using an primitive way of calling that we were very many. How was the situation then when the rebels were camping in your region? The situation became very bad. Mm. Because our government, the current government, didn't have that feeling of fighting but they wanted us to sit and talk and see what was our problem, what was making us quarrel. But we tried to explain to some commanders of whom we happened to, to give our cheats in writing to say it's the mistrust that you have because of during a vote one, two, and then at Minnie's time, there were very many, uh, very many officers in the army who happened to come from the north and northeast. So the war in Luero was misunderstood to have been people from this area who went and killed the people there. Mm. So when NRM came into power, it was a kind of a revenge. Because they came straight away to start doing things which we thought, because we were all praying when Tito came into power and started doing very bad things against people in Teso. We were all praying for Museven to take over or NRA to take power. But when the NRA came into power, there was a lot of jubilation, celebration in Teso. We said we have now been rescued. Mm. But all of a sudden, things changed against us, we said now, if this what has happened, that things have changed seriously against us. You know, during civil strife, ours was not based on the tribal, you know, like other countries now, you hear fighting in Sudan, is uh, uh, Dinkas fighting with, with this one, but for us, it was general because you would find some people from Buganda, some people from Ankole, some people from other areas joining UPA, but there was no killing that this one is a Uganda, this one was what? Mm. That one was not there, it was not tribal. Mm. But our target was targeting only government soldiers. Mm. That was the target. But as it went on, you know, even now you can witness in the recruitment in the army, they, they say you get a recommendation from LOC1, then a recommendation from Giso. Do people who know your character. But in the bush, there is no character that you know. Everybody comes, mm. you will well come. Mm. A thief also comes. A coward who wants to come <laughs> and kill and steal, he will also join you. Mm. And will say, I am also a rebel. And he will not be the participate in it. Any Anything, fighting, yes. but he will, it's very busy there <laughs> on his own. He's not even in the group. Yeah. He's doing his things alone. Yeah. But we had to tighten. Like I hear NRA, when it was also in the bush, used to punish those people who, who used to go away. For us, we, we said, no, we do exactly what we hear NRA used to do in the bush. You stop people who go to kill others. We try to mm -hmm. stop these people who are going astray, doing killings, and they were not even rebels. But because anybody putting on a ragged clothes would be assumed he's in the bush. Mm. Yet, he was not in the bush. For me, they, they gave me an honorary title, that bishop. I was a pseudo-bishop in the bush because they said, if you want to kill somebody, don't tell the bishop. If he mm. gets to know, you will not kill that person. Mm. So that bishop is stopping us. But that was not the rebels doing that. But those thugs who joined us, yes. 
Yes. And those very thugs, when we tightened belts on them, they all went to NRA. Mm -hmm. And they turned against us after knowing our, our location, our hideouts. They turned to say, we are rebels, we know where rebels are staying. They were not rebels, but they were thugs who joined the rebels to disturb people. Mm -hmm. And the situation became very, very bad because there was a lot of killings. Government soldier troops were also killing because when they come asking for you, you can see this home. When you look at outside there, you see where, where we are the houses there. The only house which is survived in that home, this home, is that house, yeah, that asbestos house. Mm -hmm. yeah, but it's the only house which is survived here is this one. That's why I'm also surviving in it. I will not move to visitor's house. These children swim. That one is the only one which survived, but the rest were all raised down. Mm. Okay. So then the situation turned to be very bad. There was a lot of killing. Rebels were also killing those who did not uh, dance to their tune. Then uh, NRA was also killing. Thugs were also busy killing because they were, I call they were about three groups. I say a typical group of thugs mm. who are not rebels. And then there were pure rebels who were really fighting with a focus. And then there was government troops. So all that confusion there made the situation to be very bad. Okay. Mm. You being one of the rebel leaders, were you friends with any other leader in um, another rebel camp, for example, Kony? We sat down and looked at ourselves that we are now fighting as a tribe because we are just within Teso here. What about if we talked to other rebels from other areas? We contacted Kony. We didn't contact Alice Lakwena. Alice came by herself. On, she was on transit passing through Teso. Mm -hmm. When she came, she wanted to recruit some people to join her. Said her group was very powerful. And we told her, and we asked her, do you know lesson one of the army? She did not know lesson one of the army. We told her, since you don't know what you do, you continue mm. to, to go. Because you cannot join somebody who is ignorant about the army. Mm. Where are you going to lead us? Mm. That one went. But she also picked some people, some young people. They also joined her, they went. Then we contacted a, a group of coin. LRA. Okay. And this is the place where all the rebels converged when you had the first attack of Serere. This was the home where they all converged. We, we, we met with the LRA, uh, we discussed, we gave ourselves positions, but the operational methods of NRA did not match with us. First of all, LRA was, uh, I think, I don't know what language to use. I think it was led by either thugs or it was led by an educated group because Kony himself, first of all, was also an educated group, the so-called leader. And when he talked to him, he could not understand us. And he started questioning us. That why is it that you sit with the with the public, civilians are happy with you, they come here. But for us there, when they come, we kill them. Mm -hmm. I said, but do you know, you know, with, with the rebellion, there are some three or four important things that you need to know. You need to know that, do you have the support of the people? Now, if you don't sit with them, you need to know, do you have forests? in your place, in case you fight and get tired, do you have where to hide and mm. rest yourself? Then I asked him, do you have uh, hills or mountains? When you are getting tired also, you can, that kind of terrain, terrain. do you have? Do you have uh, lakes in your area? But now for you, the most important one in a rebellion is to have people with you. That's why NRA succeeded, because they loved the people. But of course, when coin his operational methods did not match with us, we said, no, we are not going to continue with it. First, we didn't start with the coin. We started with the Lango, where a group led by 
Lieutenant Colonel of Peto. I think he's still alive, he's still in an RRA. I think he's still a soldier. It was led by him. We brought them also. We, we, we held a meeting with them. We successfully agreed on operational methods. But of course, the, the late pre President Apollo Milton Obote mm -hmm. did not support that idea. He, he, he communicated a message to all the fighters of Lang and he told them, you will withdraw, leave those who want to continue fighting NRA to fight, not because I support NRA, but I don't want you to continue. You are going to make people die. Mm. So all the Langs, after leaving us in Teso here, they went back, we thought they were going to start also a serious operation. We only heard that they have all joined the NRA. Oh. All of them went and joined the NRA. So they left that war. So when we brought in coin, when our, we did not agree on the operational methods for him, he believed in chopping people's ears, killing people. We said, no, please, honorable coin. We want to escort you quietly to, to Acholi. Go and continue, not killing him in Acholi. Go and continue maybe beyond Acholi. Hmm. So we escorted coin where we had a very serious fight in Minakuru, around the serious border in Acholi and Lango. We took coin beyond Acholi border, that's Bibia. Then he entered the Sudan. For us, we came back. Some of our boys also remained with him. We came back. We said, no, we cannot tolerate a person who has come to kill people you are claiming to be fighting for. Mm. Because we said we were fighting for these people. Then again, you kill the yes. very people you are fighting mm. for. Then it loses the meaning. meaning yes. And we were strengthening the, 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 the government soldiers because if NRA had followed what the president had told them not to do killings, but they also went astray. They behaved also like a coin by killing, by killing. NRA is killing them. So the situation got confused like that. So your question is, did you consult with the other fighters? It's mm. true, okay. we did. We even attempted some others in the, in the East who did not surface, that's how we tried. We also went beyond outside Uganda, trying to solicit for assistance. But when we came back, successfully, because we got ammunition and everything, we successfully came back. But all the same, we found ourselves as if we were fighting. So our fighting was not being seen. So I told my other commanders that if this was what's happening, why can't we move to Busitema, those around those areas, then we block the route to Busia. We also block the route to Malaba so that people see that we are fighting. Let us be seen. But people are not seeing us. Mm. They only hear that we are fighting, but they don't see. Mm. But uh, my colleagues did not agree with my suggestion. I think they found it was something very risky mm. to leave your home area where you have a support. Because home area here, we are saying we're in the bush. Why would we stay in our homes? You see, you can even like here. You, you, you assemble soldiers in this place. You you stay here even in NRA when they know we are here, they will not come. Okay. They know it's fire. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So um, how and uh, when did you surrender to the government of Uganda? When my friends started going there, claiming, claiming. That we have come, we have come out this the end of the war. You know, you, you go, wait for one year. The war is, I mean, fighting still continue. Then also, because of lack of trust, there was mistrust. There was fear mm. that the uh, government is making an appeal. Government has made an attempt to put presidential pardon, which didn't work very well because we did not trust. We said this is a trick of taking us, and then later it will be maybe wiped out. Because of mistrust, the war continued up to 1992. Then finally, I, I started contacts with the government. I said, I don't want to give any condition to say, if you want me to surrender, 
you give me money, you give me what, mm. or you give me a job. But what I want, what is important, is gift of life. If government can guarantee that when we come out, we are left free, then it's okay. So I had some assurances from government agents. Then I contacted my colleagues who agreed, said, can you leave the crusade? We go and surrender. I said, I will go alone and maybe with two, three, four people mm. and assess the situation. There, I will give you two signatures. One is good news, one is bad news. Mm. If I'm forced by government to write a good statement that you come out, things are very good, government is very well coming, I will write, but give that signature. You will know, the signature explains that what I'm saying here is nonsense, don't come out. But <laughs> if you see this one, good news, I'm talking from the bottom of my heart, then everybody can come. Hey. So it is so happened that in 1992, in the month of May on the 2nd, because people in Tessa are guessing, but that's the exact day when the war ended in Tessa, and no bullet, and that's the time when we were launching NAP-1, Northern Uganda program, which was launched in Isoroti Flying School. Mm -hmm. That was the day, and the big man, the president, invited me to make a statement. I made a written statement, where I told the gathering, which was there, the big congregation, that for us we come out wholeheartedly, and there is no about turn. Having been a good rebel, Omeda has since been rewarded by being put at the center of the ruling NRM government. With an influential position in society and almost no skeletons in his closet, it's very clear he has been able to live peacefully in a place he now calls home. I was forgiven, I was facilitated to contest to go to, to, to Constituent Assembly. I, I went through. I was facilitated to go to Parliament. I went through in the Sixth Parliament. And I was given a trust. I was appointed a State Minister of Housing and then a State Minister of Health. Mm. And then when my people, some of them felt aggrieved that why give a former rebel all this privilege here? They did not vote for me for, to go to Seventh Parliament. But the government said, no, we still need him. I was appointed a resident discommissioner, posted to go, where he served for six or seven years in Gulu. Mm. At that difficult time when Gulu was very bad, mm. but I managed to be there. So I think we have a very unique government. If they anybody, trusted you. Very much. Yes, and it's because you're not a bad rebel. You are a good rebel fighting for your people. I think that's why you were rewarded. I think, but you are not thinking it's so. Because <laughs> yeah, it is so. Because I didn't, I didn't see any reason why you claim to fight for somebody and then you are killing the same people. Mm, yes. mm. You tell me that, you know these trees here, I am protecting these trees and you are chopping and the trees chop down them. when they are still yes. growing. You <laughs> see. I am in the village here, you have come here. They are also just deployed to watch my movements, no. whether I'm going to go to the bush again or do what. Mm. I have, have given a challenge, very big challenge to, 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 to other countries, even to journalists who talk to me. Now tell me one country, then I will compare Uganda with that country, where you can, we, we don't have a freedom, freedom square like in Europe, I, let me say London, mm. where you have where you are given to go and insult the president and you there's immunity not to be arrested. Mm. You can, but for us in Uganda, a president is insulted anywhere. Anyhow. Whether whether you are in a toilet, you can start abusing him. Whether you are in a, a church, you can even a church leader can shoot out and say, Musebe, this is a very bad man. Nobody arrests you. Yes, even and on then, radio, people On radio, arrest, people yeah. come and begin abusing him. Mm. Oh, you can imagine. And then no action is taken. Then people say he's a very bad man. People don't know how to analyze things. Mm. Let's go for a very short break. We'll be right back. Mm.